Greetings dear listeners and welcome back to Smart New Cities in Africa and I will discuss whether I think Smart New Cities are applicable in the African context. Forced evictions are incredibly violent and of course unconstitutional. And yet they happen so often in so many of our cities because the first thing we are taught to forget about poor people is that they are people. We believe that a home is a thing a person absolutely has a right to unless the person is poor and the home is built a certain way in a certain neighborhood. But there is no single definition of the word home. After all, what is a slum besides an organic response to acute housing deficits and income inequality? And what is a shanty if not a person making a home for themselves against all odds? Slums are an imperfect housing solution. but they are also prime examples of the innovation, adaptability and resilience at the foundation and the heart of every functional city. You don't need to be the new Dubai when you're already Lagos. Underneath every shiny new mega city, there's often a story of communities displaced. This is the story that Olu Timehin is trying to tell and she speaks about how land grabs and dispossession is destroying the livelihoods of people in Lagos to make ways for shining new cities. Dear listeners, in the previous videos, I wanted you to get a good idea of what smart cities are and what could be their potential benefits and shortcomings which would determine their applicability to the context. The snippets that I just showed from the TED Talk just shows the effects that these smart new cities and such projects could have on the livelihoods of African citizens. We are currently living in hard times. In Nigeria, there are issues of poverty, unemployment, flooding, housing shortages. In South Africa, again, there's issues of poverty, lack of basic services, inequality and spatial fragmentation. And these challenges should be addressed in the developments that be create. Hence, a smart city would be very applicable in our context because people need jobs, people need houses, people need infrastructure. So if a smart new city is providing all of this, it would work really well in these African cities. However, the people that do need these resources are not likely to afford to live in smart new cities. If the focus is strictly on the technological aspects, then the smart city becomes problematic or becomes inefficient for our African cities. This makes me question if sustainable development is a utopian vision. Can we truly achieve sustainability in African cities? Slum urbanism in Africa accounts for 62% of Africa's urban population as Grant 2015 states and there are enormous infrastructural deficits such as inaccessibility to water and basic sanitation. Since informality is a dominant characteristic of smart cities, shouldn't our smart cities be defined and suited to, to urban informality? Peters 2009 states that a failure to understand urban informality masks the understanding of everyday informal living which hinders the building of a nuanced vision of African urban futures. Roy 2005 also states that informality must be regarded as a mode of urbanization, which is a process that governs urban transformation. Roy 2005 disagrees with what he calls an, an aesthetization of poverty, where the aesthetics are upgraded and not people's livelihoods. This focus is premised on the belief that an efficient city is one that should look well organized and in a geometric sense. He argues that the American idea of poverty is equated to, to a failure of geographically defined communities and hence the efforts to upgrade and integrate into the city. Smart cities have also been critiqued for being vague 
And this is what makes us question their applicability in the African context. But their vagueness allows each and every different context to adopt its smart city definition. Roy and Mosa 2019 argue that these developments are a form of marketing the cities. Slums and informal settlements are common features of African cities. However, these new developments said to be the better version. Slums are a dominant feature of Lagos cities but in these new developments these slums are cleared to make way for these developments. The city of Lagos is characterized by a growing population and many that are living on the coastline with the high risk of sea levels and unpredictable weather events. The inception of Eco Atlantic which is built on the Lagos coastline is said by some scientists to be a danger to the environment of Lagos. Amadi 2018 says that Eco Atlantic is not for Lagosians but it portrays narratives of first world development and disregards the desires of city dwellers. But after in interviewing some residents of slums in Lagos, he claims that they supported Eco Atlantic because they wanted the city to be modern. He uses this informality to probe the argument that informal settlements are regarded as unplanable and breeding poverty. Eco Atlantic City is said to improve the the image of Nigeria and to not perpetuate the ideas that the continent is impoverished but the Eco Atlantic City actually affirms the stereotypes by positioning itself as a modernizing force in Lagos. The new buildings are meant to avoid the failures and decay of the city and like a fairy godmother turning a pumpkin into a carriage regarded as a makeover for the city. Ramoroka 2020 suggests that South Africa needs to identify its, its conception of smart cities considering the failure of the modern Fontaine smart city in Gauteng. Alexander 2003 states that there cannot be a universal practice of planning. He argues that there are diverse practices in the planning profession and different kinds of planners in different contexts and hence they practice different modes of planning. Hence Ramoroka 2020 states that South Africa is silent on how technology would be used to ensure that that the smart city responds to the current socio-economic challenges in the country. Hence, it needs to clarify its conception of smart cities. Smart new cities in South Africa need to be adapted to the existing socio-economic conditions, such as the challenges of ESCOM, the high data costs, high unemployment, the levels of poverty. The current social upheavals that were experienced in KZN and Gauteng are also a representation of the high unemployment levels of poverty and inequality that are prevalent in the country and hence a smart new city needs to address these challenges. Harrison and Toad in 2017 state that there are risks associated with creating new towns to manage population growth as they are costly and have uncertain outcomes. In the Gauteng region, there is also a probability that new satellite towns could become stranded dormitory towns. They also suggest that creating new satellite cities cities without realistic economic basis should be avoided in the Gauteng province. There are calls to broaden our theoretical grasp of non-Western cities by questioning what the knowledge is grounded on to avoid one-way models and create opportunities for broader undertakings. Peters 2009. So we need to have smart cities that would address these urban challenges. So in essence what I am saying that if South Africa defines smart cities and how their smart cities are suited to their current challenges, then implementing smart new cities would be applicable in South Africa and Nigeria. However, without defining what kind of smart new cities they tend, what kind of smart new cities they want to implement, and also ensuring that these smart new cities are not copy and paste from the Western world, then smart 
smart new cities would definitely be applicable. Peters 2011 suggests that the concept of sustainability should focus on sustainable lives and livelihoods instead of technology. In this instance, one can deduce that for smart new cities to be truly applicable in the African context, they need to be better defined and to be better suited to African challenges. These new cities should not be leaving anyone behind, but Ramoroko suggests that South Africa is not ready for such a development because of the existing infrastructural challenges and because they have not clearly identified what they mean by smart new cities. And I think it is defining what smart new cities in Africa are that would guide and show whether smart new cities are applicable in Africa. 